there you are. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you? Not too bad. What have you been doing today? Um, oh my God. <laughs> Is that a um, loaded question? <laughs> yeah. So I woke up really early because um James, like we had the free James. Yeah. He's in Indonesia, so there's like a 12 hour time difference. So and I had to have a call with him and Zachary. So um yeah had a call with him at like 8 a.m and then right after that I had the um I had to sign my peace bond like online right 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 um, so sorted that out which thankfully it got sorted out quickly because when I first logged on they said um that they wouldn't be able to deal with me until the afternoon I was like oh my god so then I exited it and I was typing out a message to you be like I don't know like how long it will go but I have to go back at one and then my lawyer texts me. He's like, no, they can take you now. Come back. And I was like, oh, oh. my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> A little hectic there, eh? Yeah. Um, so that's all sorted, which is good. That's okay. from the previous stuff. But yeah. So like, do you have more to do today or is this the final thing? <clears throat> yeah, this is the, the final. Okay. So. All right. So you take a nap afterwards, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I want to say, you know, thank you, first of all, for coming back and talking with me again. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to not talk about Meet the Victims. I'm going to actually go right back to you. Uh, and I want to know all about you. Um, I'm a little bit curious. So I want to know, first off, when did you go vegan? When did I go vegan? Um, I went vegan four years ago. Okay. Um, so I was pescatarian. Right. For three years. Um, and the reason that I went pescatarian was because I saw a Jane Goodall quote that said thousands of people all over the world say they love animals, but they sit down two or three times a day to eat the flesh of creatures who have been utterly deprived of everything that can make their life worth living. And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. Um, and I had a friend that was pescatarian and it felt a bit easier and I didn't connect with fish. Right. So I just did that. And no one ever challenged me on it. I think if someone did, I would have went vegan sooner. Right. But the reason I went vegan was because I saw an Earthly Ned video where he was at a dairy farm. I don't know how it popped up. Someone must have shared it. Um, and yeah, he was at a dairy farm and he was talking about the industry practices. And he just said something along the lines of, why aren't you vegan yet? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, true. And so then I like went vegan on the spot and then watched oh, wow. conspiracy that night and like became an activist overnight pretty much. Oh, because that was going to be my next question. <laughs> That's the, how long did you take for you to become an activist? So pretty much right away then. Yeah, like I um, started watching like Earthly Ned and Joey Carbstrong and that vegan couple um, on YouTube mm -hmm. and like learned about the save movement and AV and all of that. And um, so reached out to my local save group um, and then eventually created my local AV group um, or reestablished it. Um, okay. And how long did that take for you to do, like to, to go in and reestablish AV? Um, it actually did take some time. So initially I did, um, I think like a few months into being vegan, I messaged them about it mm -hmm. and there was a chapter that existed. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, great. So I joined, um, but they just weren't very active. And then eventually they like dropped off completely. Right. And then sometime after that, um, I was working at veg camp, which is like a vegan camp for one week and like I was volunteering there as a counselor oh we don't have that shit here <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty awesome actually yeah. there's um a family from Saskatchewan that flies over um to go to it oh, wow. um but yeah um and from all over and actually um Angelina for the animals I don't know if you know who she is but um she's an oh. inspiring young activist and I had followed her and everything and yeah she was a camper there. So I was like, so excited to meet her. And she inspired me to um, get involved with Davey because I saw how active she was. And mm -hmm. I was like, like, what right. am I waiting for? So then, yeah, I became the organizer. So that probably happened a couple of years after. Um, yeah. I, I think I've been a the organizer for like two years now. Yeah. Or just over okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. So I've seen some videos, like, I don't know how long ago it was, but you were doing outreach and it looked like you were doing outreach on a campus. Mm. Yeah, so that's actually in Waterloo Park, okay. um, which is really near the university. Um, and that was a year ago. Oh, it was only um, a year ago. Yeah, yeah, it was only a year ago. It's funny because my outreach has definitely changed since then. But um, yeah, uh, I really want to do more of that type of activism. Yeah. It's just making the time for it. Um, but uh, it was really 
interesting. It was really cool um, because we ended up talking to three vegans that day out of five people that we talked to. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I, what uh, gave you the idea to do that? Like just to go out and um, honestly, it was, I think Joey Carbstrong inspired me to do that. Um, he was like the first activist that I really took a liking to like earthly Ned inspired me to yeah. become vegan. Um, but I think Joey inspired me to become an activist. Earthly Ned also does similar, um, videos, but when I saw Joey's early videos of him on the streets interviewing people and he just had his phone and he was just with someone, like he didn't bring anyone with him and he's just holding up a phone, talking to someone random on the street. I've never stuff. seen those ones. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's his earliest videos. Um, and yeah, it inspired me. And like, I, I wanted to do that right away, but mm -hmm. I, I did want someone to be there like holding the camera. So it did take me a while to like get someone that was on board with that. Um, my friend Dave right. and, um, yeah, so. So do that stuff with uh, your roommates as well. Like, did you do any of that with Dave or with Kirsten? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so Dave and I talk about doing that all the time. Um, it's just like, there's just so much else happening, I know, um, yeah. but I would like to make more time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done it with Kirsten, but yeah, Dave and I um, like to do stuff like that. And like, I've done it for him. And um, we also at like our outreach events, we do try to film our conversations. Yeah. Um, it's just a whole nother game, like it really editing is, right? those and uploading them. And yeah. um, I'm not too uh, savvy with, well, I just I, don't like to do it much. <laughs> yeah, I think just getting them out there sometimes is is all it takes. Just get them out there, get people to watch them, because I didn't care about your editing when I was watching the videos. I just cared about what you were saying, right? So that was the important part. Um, and going to activism styles, what would be your favorite form of activism? Um, I think <clears throat> street outreach is definitely my favorite. Um, like yeah that that what you saw in that video like I love doing that yeah. um I also love like doing events like AV or we the free and <clears throat> um I think it's really effective to have footage there um yeah. but I think that it's also just effective to have a conversation with someone because like I said before I would have went vegan if someone challenged me on it but no one ever did I never had that conversation um so I think the conversation is really important it also is very fulfilling I feel really good after doing outreach well, yeah because I watched uh, I think I watched a couple of those with you and the way that you spoke was very calm and I think that approach in itself it's it's like the earthling at approach right where you, you you stay calm no matter what they they throw at you so I think that was very effective so I like that style the way that you did it there um there was here I have to I do have to pull up notes because my memory is horrible that's okay uh, um when you went vegan I'm always curious as to how people's families react because I know how mine has reacted. So I'm, how did your family react when you initially told them you were going vegan or like pescatarian or how was that for you? Um, I, they weren't overly surprised. Um, yeah, they didn't have much to say. I don't think, no. um, when I was 13 or 12, um, I had first tried to go vegetarian. Um, when I saw slaughterhouse footage for the first time. So I was vegetarian for a few months and um, it was really hard, like not being able to like buy my own stuff and everything. Um, so I was just like eating veggie burgers and like peanut butter sandwiches. Um, but yeah, so I, I just like pushed that out of my mind, I guess, for a long time. But my family knew I like really cared about animals and had that interest already. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't um, overly surprising for them, I don't think. Um, all right. So remember the, the shout out that I did with you? Yeah, that was wonderful. Uh, okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, there were a few things that I touched on in that that I, I was re that really took uh, like I was like, whoa, she did this shit. Uh, so one of the first ones uh, that I seen was the turkeys or the turkeys, the chickens. Sorry, the chickens that you no, had. Turkey. They were or, turkeys. Oh, okay. the hens. Yeah, you had rescued two. Yeah, they were um, yeah. the hens. The hens. Yeah. yeah. So what happened with them? Yeah, they're living happily um, on a sanctuary. Like they're great. They got um, like the implants so that they weren't um, laying eggs. Yes. Um, so they're they're doing well. Yeah, they're thriving. And yeah, that was my first rescue ever. Um, How was that? Like, what was that like for you? Was that uh, first off? What action was it with? Who was it with? Um, I don't Can know you if say? I can name who it was. Um, well, like no, like the organization was it? Direct oh no, action? it was just my own thing. Um, oh, with, okay. Um, yeah with one other person thing. okay yeah you don't have to name um, them so yeah um 
that person and I went into that facility and that was kind of, um, that was the first time that I had been in a place, um, that was so large. It was a very large place. Um, uh, yeah, it was, so it was an egg laying facility and like just rows and rows and barns and barns. And, um, I couldn't, I think we calculated how many were in there and I think it was like quarter of a million or something. Like it's a very large place. Um, so yeah, uh, I think we had went there, investigated it and then, um, talked with, um, whomever about a home Mm -hmm. and then went back to rescue them. And that's when we were like, okay, we're going to do this whole video and make sure that like their story gets told and that we can expose the place at the same time, but also like it's a happy ending in a sense. It, um, it was really sad, um, picking them out. Um, like who do you choose? Like I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't show it in the video, but I was, I was crying and I was like, I, I don't know which, like, who should I take? Mm -hmm. Um, and I felt bad even taking them from their individual cage with like the six other hens that were in there because it's like that's their family and I'm like ripping them away but obviously it was for their best interest um but yeah it was very hard to choose um and the person I was with was just like just this one like anyone really mm-hmm. you know um and yeah so that was tough um it was tough to be in there um but then once we were walking through the field and we had them in our arms and we were looking at each other we we're like we did it like they're safe and um yeah and then just seeing them after the fact too like of them exhilarating all- right oh yeah yeah that's fantastic so they're still alive they're still doing well oh yeah they're doing great yeah that's awesome um and then uh the second one on there was the mink farm now you're this is the one where we were uh, you were I was raising trying to help you raise funds for and now you are doing community service did that um, get messed up because of what happened um no okay good um so yeah it's separate um thank goodness um but yeah I did my community service and then um I just signed the peace bond this morning right um so that's all dropped now and yeah so what exactly happened at the mink farm can you tell me because yeah. I'm, I'm not too familiar. Um, yeah, so basically, like, are you talking about Springbrook or Millbank? Because there were two main farms. Th- wow, two? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, how about the most recent? Okay, the most recent one um, was Millbank for a farm. It wasn't for a far after um, my first expose of Springbrook. Um, but at Millbank, um, with them in 20, I believe it was 2014, um, they were charged with um, 14 counts of animal cruelty. Um, and that was after um, a last chance for animals expose video of like an undercover worker there, mm-hmm. um, which showed like the animals were like mutilating each other and um, just um, not in the conditions that they're supposed to be in and that sort of right. thing. Um, so yeah, we had went there and exposed it and we found very similar evidence. Um, it's a very large place as well. So it was hard to like make our way through and like look at every mink. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, some of the ones that we did see, um, yeah, had lesions on their heads, like they were mutilating themselves or each other. Um, so yeah, it was really horrific to see. Um, at that point I was a bit, uh, desensitized to it. Um, But yeah, nonetheless, it was really horrible. And even if um, these minks are in ideal conditions uh, or ideal conditions to the industry standard, Mm -hmm. they are partially aquatic animals. um, So they should be by the water um, and they're just not doing anything that's natural or purposeful for them. They're hunters. um, They don't get to do that. And like they just live their whole life in this tiny cage until they're put into a gas chamber and skinned for their fur. So So how do you decompress from something like that when you come out of a facility mm-hmm. like that the mink farm and, and you're going home what do you do because you can't you're sitting with all of this like do you can't just I know you say you're desensitized but you can't mm-hmm. be completely because you what no. do you do um I think it's changed a bit for me like um in the beginning when I would go to these places um especially because when I, we would go to these places at we had the intention of videotaping it and for me to be on the camera to, Mm -hmm. to relate to the person that's watching it, because I find that you see this footage and um, it's a bit disconnected. Uh, But if you see someone there, like talking about what's happening, like, this is real. I'm just, I'm just a regular person. I'm here witnessing this. And I think it's a bit more impactful. 
So keeping that in mind, like me having to speak on camera about what was happening, it did make me really emotional, um, yeah. especially in the beginning. Um, but yeah, um, so I think I dealt with it a lot uh, there, like at the facility in the beginning. Um, and afterwards, it was like really haunting for me. Um, but then after the fact, um, like just after a few times, um, it became that, yeah, it was very when I'm there, I'm on a mission and I need to expose what's happening and that's it. Um, and then once I'm home, it's like, okay, go to sleep <laughs> first of all, cause you're exhausted. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and luckily I'm like, uh, I'm someone who can always fall asleep really easily. Um, so go to sleep and then it's kind of, yeah, the next day it's like lingering emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, honestly, I can't tell you how I deal with it because I'm not really sure um, how the best way to deal with it is yet. Um, but yeah, I think not like dwelling on it and like not, um, I think the thing that gets to me is looking at it on an individual scale. Like when you think about all of the individuals that were at that facility that you, who you saw yeah. um, and who are still there, that like can really dig at your heart so like to not look at it like that and to more look at it like you know we went there we exposed it and because of that like in the future there will be less individuals who will be bred into existence for this purpose right. um so to try to kind of just look at the finish line um mm -hmm. sort of thing but um yeah I think it's that hard though it, it's a lot like and I suppress a lot of it I bet you do I yeah. bet you do. Because I, I think a lot of the activists out there, like, because we see so much on a regular basis, like, even me just doing videos, I'm constantly looking at the, the Dominion stuff and all the horrors. And you're in the pits, so to speak, right? And you're doing the action firsthand. So I can only imagine um, the effects of that afterwards, right? Um, I mean, myself, I get counseling. And I'm not even what you're done. I don't even do what you do. Like I, I want to, but I'm not there yet. Like I don't have, first of all, the means uh, yet. Um, but I, I can, I can honestly say that anyone who's in activism should have counseling, even if you're not in activism. Um, as long as you have a way to decompress or to uh, let that go or to talk to somebody and you've got a group of people that you live with. So that's yeah. awesome, right? And you guys sit back and you, I'm sure you decompress with each other, correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, that's a good group of people. Okay, so I'll stop that, then I'll stop my, my speech. Um, all right, the other one, um, the pig rollover, my God. Um, I didn't even know about that at all, obviously, until I saw your, uh, your Facebook pictures and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell happened that day? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me? Yeah. Um, so I was, I was living with my friend, um, Andrew at the time and, um, him and I were just like doing our thing regular day. And we saw in the like animal rights group chat that we had that like, there was some sort of pick truck rollover. Um, and people were like, if anyone's near there, like get down there and we weren't far. So we were like, okay, let's go. And we honestly, expected for us to get there and the truck be gone like we didn't think it would still be there because it was like an hour or two ago that it happened uh, but sure enough when we arrive um there it is like it's not tipped over anymore it's upright um so yeah I straight away just ran out of the car and started going live um and I feel like that was my first live stream but I knew it was the time I was like mm -hmm. this is when you go live and um yeah it was really terrible um they were screaming like those of them that were alive. Um, you know, I can't imagine the sort of injuries that they had. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them were dead and um, they wouldn't let us come up to the truck right away. The trucker was yelling at us and um, the OPP was there. And eventually, um, as you can see in the video and on the live stream, I um, was able to negotiate with the OPP officer. I, I was that. very emotional as yeah. well. So I'm surprised he let me even go mm -hmm. up because I didn't handle that very well. Um, but I think it was your emotion that that convinced him, honestly. Yeah, I think I kind of guilted him into it mm -hmm. as well. Um, but um, I, looking back on it, I would have been a, tried to be a bit more composed. But I was just really like I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. Um, I was very riled up and anyways, when he did let me go over, then that's when I saw how many were actually dead. Like uh, so many of them weren't moving. 
and um the injuries that they had like one had like part of the truck sticking into him and um yeah I couldn't I couldn't believe it um and it took them I think about eight hours to finally transfer the pigs over to another truck and they did so um out of sight with like a a truck walking them so that we couldn't see and on private property um and yeah those are some images you won't get out of your head anytime soon eh yeah that was pretty terrible um so none of those none of those pigs got rescued then they just all went right off to slaughter Yeah, so um, we asked for them to let us have one, and we did have a home, Um, but yeah, they wouldn't agree, and so basically all the ones that were dead were shipped off to the rendering plant um, to be made into, like, animal food, Uh Um, and then the ones that, yeah, were still fit for slaughter were just sent to the local slaughterhouse. Jesus. Yeah. That's a lot, eh? yeah um it was a lot but honestly I was so glad that we were there um to uh-huh. document what happened and absolutely um, it resulted in um a live radio interview um with myself and a radio host um of the like local 570 uh-huh. news and that was awesome because it was live so yeah. because I could say whatever and they could not they could edit out. it out <laughs> so what'd um, you say <laughs> So honestly, that was great. And it brought a lot of exposure to what happened. I think it made people like challenge their thinking. Um, Dave has a friend that actually overheard that, um, who is not vegan. Um, he like caught it on the radio and said that it like really made a huge impact on him and he really likes what we're doing. So pretty cool. Yeah. Do you remember what you said on the radio show? Um, yeah, it would be somewhere on, oh, I think I did upload it to my YouTube recently. Did you? Okay. I'm okay, really bad with like uploading stuff like that, but <laughs> I did do it recently. And um, okay. something that I said was that like all pigs have their throat slit and like that they're put into a gas chamber. And um, he basically asked me if I think it's reasonable for us to, um, to adopt vegan diets. And I said that absolutely it is. And that, um, you know, what we're doing to animals is barbaric and um, there's no need for it in the year that we live in so um I also said that you know it's not I'm not upset at the driver for the accident that occurred I'm upset that people pay for this to happen and even if that truck didn't roll over like they still would have been sent to their slaughter and I think that's when I was a bit graphic about how they died oh, okay okay um but yeah I think it was I'll have to check that out really pleased with it yeah yeah I'm gonna put the link in there too because I think other people awesome. should see it. <laughs> <laughs> um I wanted so, to talk about the organizations that you're involved with right now Sure. Let's start with uh, the animal safe movement. Absolutely. You do, what do you do for them? Um, so as a local organizer, just doing vigils, um, now with Bill 156, um, we're not able to do them. Uh, unless you have like an agreement with the slaughterhouse, um, we can't, we can't bear witness to the trucks. Um, it like prohibits, like the bill prohibits us from being able to stop trucks. Okay. Um, so like at Fearman's, they still do vigils because like they're at the stoplights and they can like maybe get some footage and um, mm-hmm. be there. Um, the slaughterhouses that are local to me, um, it's just not possible. Um, and they were very aggressive even before this bill. Uh, so you can't place. just you can't just go out there and hold signs. Yeah, we could. Um, we we definitely could. Um, we don't really get large turnouts um, for oh, these okay. kinds of things. So. Um, I definitely like that was a large part of my activism in my early activism. Um, and I still do attend uh, vigils in other cities where um, mm. I know that we can bear witness bigger groups and stuff. Um, and yeah, and bigger numbers, like we did the Turkey slaughterhouse. We weren't able to bear witness there, but just to show up there mm. for the victims um, here. Yeah. It's just a bit um, lacking in numbers. And I also feel that it's very important that we are effective in our activism and use our time effectively um so instead of organizing those local events i choose to attend um, other vigils around and then um i organize more outreach events because i feel that they're going to have a larger impact how did you get into like organizing like i understand you know like did you go to school for this like did you have to take courses to be like an organizer (laughs) (laughs) no um just learn how to do it on the fly Yeah, I've always been a leader. I've always been in a leadership position wherever I go. Um, 
I worked at I a camp for several years and I was the program director there. Um, I've been like a supervisor or just in management positions mm-hmm. at other jobs. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's just my personality. How um, I you? like, I'm 26. Oh my God. <laughs> You're so young. That's awesome. Yeah. Just a go-getter. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Yeah. I just, yeah, I like to organize. Um, so, but yeah, definitely my work backgrounds have helped me, um, mm-hmm. be, a like a stronger organizer. Um, but yeah, it's just taking the initiative. Anyone can do it. Yeah. It's just, yeah, the initiative and then the, the wanting to do it for sure. Yeah. Um, what are your, some of your, uh, your favorite moments with animal save movement? Like if you could pick one of the, the best moments, what would it be? Hmm. That I personally experienced? Yeah. Huh. That's a good question. Okay. Um, yeah, I think my favorite moment uh, was at St. Helens Meat Packers in Toronto. Um, and I believe this was part of an all day vigil. Um, I'm not mistaken. So myself and uh, Varun Verlin um, of Animal Safe Movement as well, um, we organized like an all-day vigil um, along with like other organizers. Um, so we did one at St. Helens in the morning um, and then we did uh, we did Fearman's and then we did uh, Guelph Cargill and then we did Conestoga Meat Packers here in oh, Kitchener. My. So it was, yeah, it was a big vigil. Um, and the and beginning... So everyone in this, everyone in the same vigil just carried on. Like everyone? most did, um, not okay. everyone went to all four, um, myself and like probably six others went to all four and then some went to the first few, some right. went to the last few, depending on where they were and okay. uh, what worked. But Regan Russell was actually there Aww. and, um, she came to the first three, oh, okay. um, and yeah, we had a beautiful like ceremony at um, St. Helens. Um, so that was my like favorite bit of it. Uh, what was like, the ceremony? Yeah, tell me about well, the ceremony. Well, it was in the morning. So we had like the candles um, and um, I think it was Varun said a few words and we like tied roses to the um, to the fence of the Riding Regency, which is the slaughterhouse directly mm-hmm. across the street from St. Helens that was closed down. Um, so it had just closed down because of um, E. coli. Um, and now it's opened back up. Um, but yes, Surprise. we had to put um, roses there to like honor the victims. And um, and it was a really powerful vigil because of the amount of trucks that stopped as well. Because at, at St. Helens, they kind of have to stop because there can only be two trucks in the driveway. And, um, and you're right there in front of the driveway. And then the other trucks have to wait on the side. So you're with them for a long period of time. Um, so it was really powerful. And to see, mm-hmm. to see how the conditions were for these animals, like some of them were like, you know, ankle deep in their feces. And um, yeah, it was just awful, but it was really beautiful to come together with so many like-minded people. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, I couldn't even imagine an all day vigil. I, that would be something I'd like to organize. <laughs> Only I don't it's know. Hard. Have, it's yeah, hard I could. Emotionally. I bet. Um, what about uh, the Nonus for the Voices? And so um, you say you've been doing that for two years? Yeah, just over two years. Um, okay. And yeah, you, when we. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, do you still do that actively? That one? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll be doing an um, international Cube Day event. Um, so I usually, um, do one once a month. So when I started organizing it, um, it was, um, just myself. Mm -hmm. And then after a few months, um, I met David, he came to one of the cubes and once he had been out a couple more times, I asked him if he would like to organize because we were growing so massively at that point and I could not handle it by myself. Um, so yeah, David's an organizer and then person, my other roommate is um, now a co-organizer too. Nice. Um, so yeah, the three of us run that together. Okay. Once a month, eh? Like out here, we usually do them once a week, but, uh, I think with the amount of groups that you're organizing, it's kind of hard to do everything, all three of them once a week. Right. So, yeah. So There's you kind of have to happening. schedule it. Yeah. Plus you've and got other we- things going on. Yeah, of course. And there's a lot of AV groups um, in surrounding cities as okay. well. So it's 
Um, and most of us all do it once a month. So it's hard to coordinate. It's like, you know, we have like four groups that are active around here. So mm. it's like, hey, you get this weekend, we get that weekend. Uh, um, so, and we rotate to each other's events. And um, so like, I'm still going to more cubes than once a month, but um, I kind of supporting other people's cubes, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. that's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, and then uh, fine, I'm not going to pick a favorite unless, you know, yeah, I will, I will. Um, what is one of your favorite outreach moments at uh, AV when you were doing one of your moments? Tell me one of your favorite moments. Okay. Um, well, there's plenty, but sure. um, I'll go with one that's most recent because it was okay. really interesting. Okay. Um, and it was at the last AV Cube in Toronto. Um, it was a rainy night. Um, it was pretty horrible, like weather wise. And I was like, oh my gosh, we came out all this way and it's like mm-hmm. raining and like what's happening. Um, but I had a really good conversation. So these two men come up um, and I'm trying to remember where they were from. Um, Israel, they were from Israel. Oh. And um, it was, there was a bit of a language barrier there at first, um, but I found that the one man, um, you know, was able to fully understand me and um, speak with me as well. So I was kind of more talking with him, but we ended up getting into this conversation. They didn't agree with what was being shown on the screens. They didn't align with it. And this man ends up like telling me that he works at Conestoga Meat Packers, the slaughterhouse in Kitchener, oh, wow. um, which was so odd that he was in Toronto as well. Um, and that like, I'm, that's the slaughterhouse Great. I have vigils at. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I can't believe that. And he works on the kill floor and everything as well. But he tells them that he can't kill them um, because he just can't. Um, so he's the one that like puts them in the freezer or whatever. And it was such a, interesting conversation like I definitely oh like, make well you never know I guess but like it's not like I got the impression that he was going to go vegan or anything mm. but he was on our side of things and that like well, it's gonna we make him know. think yeah mm. and he said he didn't eat pigs which is the animals that they kill like, there yeah um so yeah it was quite a powerful uh, conversation it was just a very interesting um coincidence you could see, you could see their eyes and there is this flickering it was an interesting conversation it was very um emotional and he was definitely like on our side but he ended up he ended up thinking that we don't have um we don't make a individual impact um so uh, I kind of left him on like a call to action but we'll see see we'll see well I, I never will see actually no I guess you won't maybe. <laughs> which which leads us ah uh, to we the free Yes. Okay, so that's kind of a perfect lead in there, because on We the Free, you can follow what they do. Why don't you just tell me about We the Free? Let's just start there. Yeah, sure. So We the Free is an animal rights organization um, that takes a data-based approach um, to street activism. So they do demonstrations that are very similar to um, what you would call a cube of truth, but they're called uh, WTF diamonds. And we're just showing what happens in the industry, just like just like you would do at a um, outreach event. And the difference is is that um, the method is much more Socratic, as well as we can track our activism. Um, so the cards that we give out um, lead to the website that uh, prompts you to enter a code, um, and each activist has their own code. And through that, you're able to see if people actually went to the website, if they watched any documentaries, if they signed up for Challenge 22, things like that. Um, and also a big difference with We the Free is it's um, centered around community building. Um, so it's a very inclusive environment. Um, and we, we understand that, um, you know, activists need to feel recognized and appreciated and like they're a part of a community um, in order to keep doing what they're doing. Um, we see a lot of activists burn out after you know a couple of years or even a few months because they just don't feel recognized in the community. So we want to really get back to that community building. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. I think it's gonna be appealing to a lot of people. Um, I think because when we go out there and we do our outreach, it, you get excited. You had this wonderful conversation with this, this mm-hmm. couple, right? Or this individual, and you want to know, will they come back and tell me they went vegan? <laughs> Did they I, watch any of those videos? So yeah, being able to track that is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what is your position with me? I'm the regional support lead for North America. Okay, that's awesome. um, so yeah, my role is just to support um, local organizers in North America and help um, build new teams. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what all? Well, how many teams are there so far in Canada? Um, in Canada, there are um, five. Now. <laughs> five it's now? like it's all happening <laughs> like so quickly, but it's Waterloo, Calgary, Barrie. Um, there's Vancouver now. Um, Edmonton. Edmonton. Um, yes. And then, yeah, there are some other ones that in the work, but I think we have five established in uh-huh. Canada. And then I think worldwide we have, I want to say 18, but um, yeah, it's, it's uh, from the time that I first heard about it, like two months ago on um, until now, let's say uh, it's just, I see it almost everywhere now. So it's going to, it's going to expand like wildfire. Yeah. I think once everybody gets this data analysis thing, they're going to be like, what? Uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Um, Okay, so that is what you have on the go right now, right? You got We the Free. Yes. Um, do you have any other projects? I mean, I know you do a lot of protesting and you got a lot of things. So just tell me a few of the things that you got laid out that you can tell me anyway. Sure. Um, yeah, honestly, I got to keep my nose clean for a little while. Um, mm. So uh, in terms Good of girl. the rest of your work, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, be, um, I'll be keeping quiet on that. Um, but I definitely just want to focus more on outreach my um my role with we the free will take up like a large portion of my time in activism um but yeah I think that doing more of the like street outreach stuff just like just doing my thing with that um you're really good at it thank you (laughs) so yeah that's that's kind of what you can expect from me in the future um are you going to upload more videos then? Can you record your We The Free outreaches? Yeah, and put those definitely. Out there? I do have some um, some videos in the works right now. I just, okay. um, yeah, I'm so, yeah, time. Like, yeah, it's finding the time and it's also like the desire to do it. Um, well, um, from someone who's a newbie, it's me, um, I think that watching other people's styles of outreach is very effective for us because you know we go through all that anger right like, you meat eater right <laughs> but when we see other people and the calm approach and how it works you know like that worked okay well maybe i'll you know try to calm so seeing yeah. your stuff out there it kind of calmed me down so i would recommend putting up more of your outreaches because I think it will help a lot of people besides me. Thank you, Jorraine. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think that it's important to upload outreach conversations because not only for what you just said, but also because then that conversation is shared with people that are non-vegan and maybe they have the same objections. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I definitely have to nail down with that and just suck it up. Uh, <laughs> just do it. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, okay, so you're going to keep your nose clean. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to end. I know I've asked you this this question already, and I'm I'm going to I'm going to close it off because what would you say to a vegan out there who is watching you and who is non-active but is supporting you? Thank you for everything that you do for the animals in the sense that you are not contributing toward towards their suffering. But remember that we will not achieve animal liberation until we shed light on the industry and challenge the social norm of eating their bodies in secretion. So it's really important that you do whatever activism you can, whatever resonates with you, whether that's just posting online to social media, creating videos, um, or outreaching on the streets, whatever resonates most with you, do something because they need you. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Jen. Thanks, Um, Jen. You're welcome. Um, I'm. I'll I'll reach out to you soon. Uh, I'm gonna have lots of questions uh, when it comes to We the Free. So, uh, thank you so much for everything and taking the time again to talk to me today. And uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much, Jen. It's lovely. (laughs) Okay. Bye, Jen. Bye.